Xeno Goku, an alternate version of Goku who appears in the show and video game spin-off series Dragon Ball Heroes. After undergoing the events of Dragon Ball Z, the movies, GT, and even the beginning of Super, he became a time patroller battling against the Dark Empire to fulfill his duties as the guardian of history. With power that surpasses all of the characters we've ever seen in Dragon Ball, put together. People like Jiren who was stated stronger than Infinite Zamasu who's literally a multiversal timeline incarnate. With Omen UI Goku and Jiren being separately able to shape this entire infinite world of void just by existing. And MUI Goku who can defeat the same Jiren at full power, making gods across the multiverse stand up in admiration. Fusion Reborn Goku who as a Super Saiyan 3 can shake the entirety of other worlds, with other worlds containing universal sized planets that can become lost in the vastness of the afterlife and is arguably above abstract concepts themselves, warping all of hell just by transforming alone. And even Gogeta, the angel born in hell, whose energy was stated to give way to an infinite power that can be sensed in the living world engulfing an entire galaxy even though he's dead. The Grand Priest, who can create time and space for the infinite world of Void, Zeno the Omni King, who can erase entire multiversal timelines with a wave of his hand, and Super Shenron, who can reverse the actions done by the Omni King and has even eaten the world of Void that was stated to have no concept of time and space, with wish abilities that have a boundless limitation. But the man we have today is a character that can blink all of these people away with a single thought. Xeno Goku being a time patroller works through the time nest where all history is stored and this is where people like Krono will live and oversee everything in history. Although she would get one-shotted by pretty much everyone in Dragon Ball Heroes, she's extremely powerful in full perspective. While Zeno can erase entire timelines, Krono was actually able to merge multiple of these timelines together casually, with her even being able to hold up the entire multiverse with her pure strength alone, as she's completely unhinged from time itself as she controls all of it. Demigra, an interdimensional demon who was stuck in the crack of time and planned to destroy all of history. With statements regarding there to be an infinite or uncountable amount of these possible paths of history, with endless possibilities. This is word for word the many worlds interpretation. The many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics asserts that all possible outcomes of quantum measurements are physically realized in some alternate world. Anything that can happen, will happen. With endless possibilities, all quantum events with probabilistic outcomes resolve in all ways at once, passing through a number of Everest branches with each considered to be its own universe. With a probabilistic outcome of there being higher dimensional beings and realms that exist in some alternate timeline within the time nest, these infinite timelines contain realms that house the Sukuruku space and hyperbolic time chamber that has no concept of time and space, and the afterlife which is confirmed to be a higher dimension of the living universe transcending it indefinitely. With even the gods of destruction in Dragon Ball Super stating that they transcend dimensions. When I say concepts, I'm in reference to Platonism, which is the view that there exists such things as abstract objects, where these objects do not exist in time and space, and therefore completely non-physical and non-mental, existing beyond infinite transcendental dimensions or outer versal. These outer versal constructs exist within each of the histories or timelines as people as weak as evil amped Kid Buu before Goku even learns about the god forms can destroy entire crystals that represent timelines themselves. And as I said before, Demigra was going to destroy all of this to absolute and utter nothingness, surpassing characters like Meki Kapibora who could swallow all of the infinite timelines into himself and regenerate endlessly. Demigra even absorbs Toki Toki, a bird of necessary existence for all of history, the controller of fate itself and exists beyond infinite dimensions, responsible for creating all of the infinite creation as Demigra has now gained power beyond human comprehension and still means nothing and gets bullied by base Sino Goku. With Mira surpassing first form Demigra whose self-destruction alone was powerful enough to obliterate all of space and time contained within the time nest, and even beings like Toa who can exist outside of infinite timelines claims that she won't escape this either, 
and that it's over for everyone. And Mira was ultimately put down and defeated by a post-Universe 6 Saga Super Saiyan Blue Goku. With the same Goku in base withstanding the attack Demigra was going to use to obliterate reality before he even knew what Super Saiyan Blue was. Just to put this in full perspective, Xeno Goku was able to swap hands with a post-Tournament of Power Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Existing outside of everything is Beats World, aka the real world that views the entire cosmology as fiction. We know these aren't necessarily just higher geometrical dimensions in the real world like we would attribute to the difference between the fourth dimension and the fifth, but moreover conceptually higher spatial dimensions, as we know the video game characters like Beat need to join the game as avatars, meaning this is a whole conceptual reality difference. So even an infinite dimensional being in the Dragon Ball Heroes game or Xenoverse would still be conceptually closer to the game than any real world counterpart. This would make the real world in Dragon Ball Heroes a boundless realm, and Demigra in his third form surpasses his previous two that can not only threaten all of the infinite histories in a time nest, but even the parallel quests that extend their own infinite history with the crack of time being the origin of everything, transcending reality infinitely. And Demigra was going to destroy all of this, including the real world, into absolute nothingness. This would make Demigra a literal boundless threat and you guessed it, he still got slapped by base Xeno Goku without even trying. With Xeno Goku being stronger than Celius, who can reset all of existence, including Beat's world, all at once. In Dragon Ball GT, Super Saiyan 4 is a powerhouse and extremely efficient form for Goku to use, with the multiplier for Super Saiyan 4 exceeding billions to trillions of times his base form, which I'll explain further in my GT scale that will come out very soon. However, as formidable as Super Saiyan 4 Goku was in GT, Xeno Goku is a completely different monster. Xeno Goku is so powerful that he's only limited to using Super Saiyan in a fight and no higher, because if he unleashes Super Saiyan 4, his power will be a threat to all of time. With Xeno Goku getting more impressive forms like Ultra Full Power Super Saiyan 4 with Vegeta that was able to defeat Black Janemba, who was stated to be the literal embodiment of the concept of evil itself and the necessary existence for all of creation. However, this power means nothing and gets put down like a dog once Xeno Goku and Vegeta unleash their full power. Later in a fight with Fu, CC Goku and Xeno Goku need to fuse into Zeno Gogeta and CC Gogeta just to stand a chance, with the fusion stating to have power that transcends dimensions. However, they're overpowered and one shot and reverting back to their separate parts. An idea proposed by the Supreme Kai of Time entails that if Xeno Goku and CC Goku merge their power, they might actually have a chance of defeating Fu who just previously one shot their fusions. With their combined strength, they're able to overpower Fu's barrier, forcing him to block it himself, with even Fu claiming that that attack could have defeated him. As Xeno Goku and CC Goku have now surpassed their previous fusions, as Super Saiyan Blue Goku Gogeta who was previously stated to have enough power to defeat the Omni King in Dragon Ball Heroes, with Zeno surpassing the gods of destruction who can destroy all of time in their fights and even reduce Beat's world to nothingness. And even Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta who can beat Dark Omega Shenron with one finger, with this same Omega stating to have power that can obliterate reality at a whim. With Xeno Goku being able to fight against Fu who was able to enter the Charisma world that views even Beat's world world is fiction. Xeno Goku being connected to the Xenoverse games gives him a plethora of hacks such as boundary manipulation, meaning there's nothing he cannot achieve, and even makes the impossible possible, as even Demigra had the ability to change fate and probability itself, and we know how that went. He has the ability to control life, matter, space, reality, probability, and even has conceptual manipulation. He has the ability to create miracles or destroy them. Xeno Goku would be a boundless to infinite boundless threat that can obliterate all of reality by wishing it to be so. So I guess in the end, Goku really does solo. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. And if you guys want to request a video personally or just want to support me in any way, my cash out will be in the description and on screen for you to do that as well. And look out for a Dragon Ball GT scaling video that will come out very soon. Kazi uploading? What? <laughs> Alright, I love you guys. See ya.